today, I want to introduce some brilliant things and the thoughts, geometric artifacts to do, which come from the 1870s, so 140 years old uh, already. So I'm Ede Fitzer, I'm a Christian a part-time language teacher and a mathematician. And uh, as a Christian, I always like to put some word from the Bible at the beginning of my presentations, and this is especially because of the events which Jacqueline Santa Claus, the other told this, show me Lord, my life's end and the number of my days, let me know how fleeting my life is. You've made my days a mere hand breaths span of my years is nothing before you. Everyone is by the breath, even those who seem secure. So I thank my family for allowing me <laughs> to do this and uh, I thank uh, the people who gave me good advice. Also, there's a mathematician, a good friend here uh, in Nagoya. And I thank uh, for this occasion to give this presentation and introduce this topic. Um, I present this research under a new license, which I recently created under the Creative Peace License for Peaceful, Non Offensive, and Non Criminal Purposes. Uh, this is the outline of my presentation. I give you an introduction. Then I'll talk about the Clifford algebra of the plane, then of three-dimensional space. Here I concentrate because this should be very relevant and very instructive. Uh, then I'll talk about one dimension up, about space and time. There will be only two slides, but more this you learn lots of physics or most of physics in these slides. And then the conformal geometric algebra, which will be later used by the next speaker, uh, Mr. Hahn. Then something about Clifford analysis, which you need for things like optimization, um, etc., and the conclusions and literature. So uh, this is mainly based on the work of these three people, um, starting with Hamilton, who is famous uh, amongst many things for the Quaternions, and Grassmann, who, like me, was a hobby volunteer mathematician, just a school teacher. And he invented uh, extensive algebra, the outer product, uh, the a kind of Grassmann algebra, which is uh, well known uh, nowadays. And based on the work of the two, uh, William Kevin Clifford here, he was a young Goldsmith professor of applied mathematics in London, and in 1878 he published a paper with the title Applications of Grassmann's Extensive Algebra. And in this paper, he unified the work of Hamilton on quaternions and Grassmann on uh, extensive algebra. So, and what he did was adding the measurement of length and angle to Grassmann's uh, algebraic methods. So he unified and generalized in his geometric algebras the work of Hamilton and Grassmann. And uh, it has an universality aspect, and that is the following. If you have a Clifford algebra over a vector space, and this has an inner product, um, then by Clifford's geometric product, uh, you uh, generate the algebra. That's a fundamental way you have a certain product on a set, and you generate an algebra by making it a whole set. And the universality Solidity is that if you have an isometry from this vector space into another in a product algebra, then you can uniquely extend this isometry map into the whole of the Clifford algebra, just knowing it, its values from the vector space. Uh, so this is a unique associative and multilinear algebra with this property. And so to generalize methods from algebra, analysis, calculus, differential geometry, to real numbers, complex numbers, quaternions, and to vector spaces and multi-vector spaces, which include uh, elements for all subspaces to be represented, uh, you need Clifford algebras. You can't avoid it in the end. Always hit on, on the algebra in the end. And so that's also the reason why in history of mathematics so far, many Clifford algebras have been studied, invented, and reinvented. And here's just a list of uh, some of these algebras, some like suddenly complex numbers, hyperbolic numbers, dual numbers, uh, quaternions better, uh, better known, 
but also it includes the uh, very important Lie algebras, motion operator algebras. So now I will introduce the geometric algebra of the plane of the two dimensional space. And we have this space here, and it has two vectors which um, have an each an inner product with itself to plus one, less squared plus one, and they are orthogonal. So that makes an orthogonal basis of the plane. And now we set, I indicate this with the blue sign, that the geometric product, that is the Clifford product, of the vector with itself should equal to the inner product here. And now I have two vectors here, E plus, uh, E1 plus E2, and also I take the square, and the square I set again equal to the inner product, and that is 2. But I get here, uh, if I expand it, the square terms which I know already, and I get a new term here, and this new term comes extra here. So this new term uh, must be zero, therefore. This new term must be zero. Therefore, E1 times E2 in the geometric product must be minus E2 times E1. That's the basic reason where it comes from. So simply setting uh, the square of a vector equal to its inner product already forces me to accept uh, this rule here. And this new entity uh, which comes here and has this anti-symmetric property in this product uh, is called bivector. And um, so in general, these are two orthogonal vectors, E1 and E2, they are orthogonal. In general, if I have orthogonal vectors in this geometric product, I get um, uh, Grassmann's outer product, um, this is equal then here, E1 times E2 then is equal uh, the outer product, and this is anti-symmetric as I know from here. And we use the abbreviation. If I have the product of two basis vectors, I can simply use the index to indicate uh, the by vector which is made in this way by the product. And by uh, simply using associativity, which is imposed upon the product, I can uh, compute uh, further products. For example, the product, geometric product of a vector versus new by vector. I expand it here and say I can buy the stability first and if this square they get E2 and here I get minus E1. And uh, what E12 is doing to E1 and E2 is simply a positive 90 degree rotation. And if I take the opposite order, take the by vector on the left side, um, I also get vectors, but now it responds to a negative uh, 90 degree rotation. So the order is really important uh, how you compute. And uh, in general, it acts like a rotation operator. So I can apply to vector E1 and uh, to the vector E2. And the result is always uh, opposite. Uh, so in general, if I take a vector A and multiply with E1, 2, it is also symmetric. And the square of a bi vector is negative, And this is shown here. I simply um, expand the product, and then I reorder E2, E1, and I get a minus sign. And that's like uh, with complex numbers. Now here, I uh, give you uh, the multiplication table of all the elements of the algebra, the geometric algebra uh, of uh, two dimensions. You have the scalar one, which is from the square of the vector, the two vectors, and the bi vector. And these are all the elements. And here, the elements uh, multiplied from the left with these elements on the right. And the results are plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, minus 1 on the diagonal. And the other results which we have computed are given here. So with this table, the algebra is completely defined. Every product can be computed. A computer can compute it. Anybody uh, can compute it. And by looking at subtables, for example, the table of 1 and E12, it's closed because the product of E12 is equal to this minus 1. So that's a closed subalgebra, and it is isomorphic uh, to complex numbers. And the one, the scalar, is called zero vector. Right? Zero has no dimension. And the bi vector 2 is called a two dimensional because it's made from uh, two vectors here. And now I show um, more about this product. 
So I have to, now I compute with the help of the multiplication table, for example, the product of two vectors they are given here, a1, a2 are the coefficients, and I get a scalar part here, and I get a bivector part here. And the scalar part is symmetric, the bivector part with this minus sign here is anti-symmetric. And I know this is the inner product part, which is well known, and this is now the outer product part. So the scalar product is symmetric, and uh, it is scalar here, and here it is written with the kind of the cosine and the length of a and b. The bivector is uh, anti-symmetric and gives you the outer product part, and uh, it can be written uh, with the help of this e12, and then this coefficient here is exactly length of a times length of b times the sine of the n. So both cosine and sine appear now. Now for parallel vectors, uh, the cosine is one, this is zero, they commute because you only have an inner product, inner product part, this is zero again. For orthogonal vectors, it enter commutes. You only have the sine part, this is uh, plus one, if the angle is 90 degrees, and this is zero here, and you have this enter commutation uh, property here, so you get And the outer product is the oriented area of the parallelogram in the plane spanned by the vectors a and b. So this length of a times length of b times sine theta is exactly the formula for the area of a parallelogram. And you can compute it by simply uh, taking uh, this value here and multiplying this the inverse of e12 and the inverse because the square is minus 1 is simply minus e12. Now we can use the famous Euler formula, take the inner product part and write it here uh, in terms of the length of the two vectors and the outer product part. And here I write the bivector, uh, E12, uh, as I, A, B, specifying the plane of the vectors A and B. Now, in two dimensions, there's only one plane, so I don't need to do it. But in higher dimensions, two vectors, they make a plane in dimensional space and this plane has its own bivector and I'm already anticipating what is to come. I write it here in uh, this fashion. And if I have cosine theta a b i squares to minus one and sine theta i b I can apply from complex numbers the famous Euler formula and write it in exponential form here. And the geometric product has an inverse. The inverse is simply a divided by a squared. If I uh, multiply it, I get 1. I can multiply it from the right or from the left. It always gives 1. And we see a squared is simply the length of a squared. So I simply rescale the vector. And this rescaling is the same like reflection of the unit circle, not changing the direction, but changing the length. And this inverse, that this exists, gives big simplifications and makes computations really easy in many cases.